Okay, uh, how's everybody doing today? I'm really happy to be here. I want to thank the guys from launch before I start, uh, Jason, Katie, everyone else. Um, that was pretty cool just now, uh, hearing from Boxby after they pitched last year. Uh, my name is Matt Lucido. I'm founder and CEO of Porter. And I'm um, here to tell you a little bit about our experience over the last uh, eight months. Um, we are operating out of Los Angeles right now, um, and we're here at launch to let you guys know that we'll be launching in San Francisco in a couple months, but we'll get into more of those details in a little while. But uh, we are useporter.com, and uh, what we do fundamentally is connect consumers with high quality local service providers. And so we've built a revolutionary and very simple, beautiful app that enables you to source, book, and manage local in-home service providers. And so what does that really mean? Well, we've taken a look at what TaskRab and others have done in the market, and we've said we want to pick very specific curated service categories, the most high demand service categories, and put them in one app. And so if you look at our next slide here, um, we went out and surveyed over 1,000 people and said, what are the things that you want on a weekly basis? What are the things that you'd be willing to outsource? What takes a lot of time in your daily lives? And this is what we found, house cleaning, dog walking, dry cleaning and, and wash and fold. These are the things that people will do on a weekly basis, recurring, high touch with our brand, recurring re projectable revenue. And then we're gonna test a few more, but we're never gonna get above you know, six, eight categories because the whole point of what we're doing is we're trying to keep people within a very finite structure um, and, 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 and interacting with our brand consistently. And so we'll be testing private chef, meal plans, a mobile car wash, uh, among others. A few quick sl product slides for you to give you a snapshot of what we've built. Um, this is what it actually looks like today if you're on your mobile device. Um, we are a native uh, uh, browser-only app right now. We'll be building a native iOS app uh, and launching that shortly. <clears throat> but it's a very, very beautiful and seamless experience. Um, go to the next slide, please. It literally takes only 30 seconds from start to finish to, to book a service, whether you're doing house cleaning or dog walking or dry cleaning. Uh, very, very simple. You're providing us with date and time only. We are taking care of everything else. The sourcing of the labor. You're not sifting through review sites with us. You're simply going and picking a date and time, uh, 30 seconds you know, from start to finish, uh, and you're going about your daily life. Um, and this is a snapshot of our booking flow in the house cleaning. Last slide is the confirmation screen. What you're seeing here is basically, we're storing address and payment, very easy to rebook, book subscription up front, whatever makes sense for you as, as a customer. Um, and uh, this is the last product slide, and we can show you some snapshots of the website if you'd like, but I wanna talk more about why we're doing this. You know, Uber, Boxby, others that you've heard today, what we're capitalizing on is a convenience economy, <clears throat> right? This is on-demand marketplaces. We want things now, we want things at our fingertips. Um, and it's a massive undefined market if you look at it across multiple different categories. And so, <clears throat> you know, thinking about what we're going to be launching, you know, dog walking, you know, massage, house cleaning, dry cleaning, car wash, etc. This adds up to a massive market opportunity. And the best part is there's really, it's really bereft of technology, right? So you're starting to see a little bit come about, but we're taking the things that, again, are, are most are most demanded in putting them into one app, packaging it very cleanly and nicely, and serving it up. Um, the interesting thing about this figure is that you know, most of these businesses, you know, you're talking about a lot of undocumented labor, cash that's not being reported. So by my estimation, this is probably 25% low. So it's, it's a fantastically big market. So really what we're talking about here is time. I mean, when you're, when you're using Porter, you're actually buying time. And time is our most valuable asset. The guys in the crowd may not know this as well as some of the ladies, but uh, it's a fact that we do 90 minutes of chores a day. And so those things add up very, very, very quickly. Um, so you think about if you add up your dishwashing and you're, you're making your bed and cleaning up, tidying up, things like that, they add up quick. Um, another interesting fact is that as Americans, we spend almost five hours a day doing you know, leisure activities. And so what we're trying to do with Porter, and a lot of these other companies are trying to do too, is reduce that 90 minutes and expand the five hours of leisure time. And so far, we've been very consistent, at, at, and it's been, uh, we've, our customers are saying that we, we're actually doing that for them. I'll tell you a, a brief anecdotal story about one of our customers. <clears throat> this isn't only for the richest, most affluent people in the world. Um, Mary is a customer of ours, actual customer. She's a grad student, she's a single mom. She's penny pinching, right? She's, she's taking on debt to go to grad school, but she's willing to actually spend a little bit more money to get time back to spend with her kids, work on her papers or whatever. New York Times actually did an article um, six months ago or so where some e economists, grad students, 
actually did the numbers. They did the math, and what they looked at was, if I spent an hour you know, doing this project and instead outsourced with debt, house cleaning, for example, will I be, make more money you know, with salary you know, three, five, 10 years down the road? And when they crunched the numbers, the analysis actually told them that it was smarter to take on more debt today and outsource the things to give them back time than it was to do that themselves. It's really pretty interesting. And if you want the article, come and see me and I'll, I'll get you the link. But um, it's interesting stuff and, and we're right there capitalizing on the, on the same trend. <clears throat> so proof in the pudding, right? What have we actually done since we launched in, in, in Los Angeles last summer? And we spent zero dollars on advertising and we've grown 150% month over month since launch. Um, and customers, customer lifetime value is almost 300 bucks. Um, that's pretty special. Another thing that we're really proud of is that you know, average e-commerce con web conversion is three to 5% with the best of the best doing 10%, like the finance company, like E-Trades of the world. We're at 30%, it's pretty phenomenal. And another telling statistic is 35% you know, of our customers are buying more than twice, uh, which is pretty special when you think about the value that we're actually providing, cons considering that we're doing it across multiple verticals. So quickly, fundraising. We have raised 120,000 in, in, in seed funding uh, to date, uh, and uh, we are seeking additional 750 to a million dollars in, in capital um, that'll give us a 12 to 18 month bridge until we raise a, you know, a larger Series A round. Um, we, did the, we did the first round on convertible debt, probably we'll do this next one on convertible debt as well, um, but if you're an investor in the room, we're happy to talk to you about price rounds as well. Um, and most of this capital will go to building out our team um, that I'll talk to you about in a little bit. Um, but really focusing primarily on customer acquisition. We've spent nothing right now to date on doing it. We've grown very, very quickly. Uh, and now we're, at, you know, we're fighting hard to understand you know, what is cost per lead, what is cost per acquisition online, spending money so that we can begin to scale our operation up and start expanding into new, new cities, including San Francisco in a few months. So launch, we're at Launch Festival, so we're gonna launch something, right? So we're launching in San Francisco May 1st, um, and we're launching our iOS app uh, April 1st, so we're about five weeks away from that. Um, and really excited about that. Um, snapshot of our management team, Maya over here is our ops manager. Um, but we recently put this team together and it's been one of our biggest challenges as a startup uh, is filling out our team so that we can, and, and doing it with very little capital. Um, but we recently put together a, a stellar team. My background is uh, finance and strategy at various companies including The Honest Company in Los Angeles. Um, our senior developer, our CTO, uh, came from Penny Mac uh, and uh, doing work with FAA, um, coding in old school programming languages like C Sharp and, and C++ and stuff like that. Um, have a fantastic customer acquisitions guru. Um, came from Shoe Dazzle, Chow Now. He's worked with uh, other LA companies like Style Saint and Black Tux. Um, and a, a phenomenal iOS developer um, from Pandora and AOL. So we're really excited about the team we've put together. Um, and we continue to grow. And uh, we do have a couple of job openings. Um, actually, so um, if you are looking for um, some work and you are uh, a UX UI designer uh, and developer, we're looking for that unicorn hybrid person that can design and code on the front end. I see him nodding right there. Um, we're definitely looking for somebody like that as well as somebody that can do uh, corporate development for us. So we're looking for somebody that can do some high level sales, joint ventures, partnerships as we expand into new cities. San Francisco being the next, we'll be in San Diego and Irvine in the next uh, couple months as well. And then we'll move to the East Coast um, starting with uh, New York and Boston and DC. And we'll do all that within the next six months. Uh, and of course, if you are that unicorn person, uh, we are in Venice Beach. Um, so, you know, fun and sun and beach, um, of course. Uh, my name is Matt. Anybody here can reach me at matt at useporter.com. Um, and I'll happy to take questions at this point. Thanks for having me, you guys. Hey, thanks for the presentation. Uh, so my question is the, I don't know, you know, I'm not exactly familiar with the space, but I know that care.com just kind of came into the house um, and they IPO'd recently. Yeah, and, they, and they're huge, yeah. Um, and then I met somebody else, Handy Book here, and uh, I don't know, I think Flinja might have some crossover. Do you feel like it's a highly competitive space? How much focus do you have on your competitors? And what are you doing to, you know, be unique? 
Yeah, it's a really good question. So uh, I'll address it uh, company by company. You, you brought up care.com. Um, th they, like Angie's List um, and others, are essentially a, a review site, right? You're going on there to source your own labor. Um, so we're different in the respect that with us, you're simply going to a site to pick time and place. So we're doing all that vetting and scrubbing of local service providers on our end, making sure that they're uh, you know, English speaking, have smartphones, have, have experience. You know, we, we call all the references for our people, fully background check, and then we provide you know, a million dollars of blanket coverage per job of insurance. Um, so that's how we're a little bit different than care.com. And of course, we're within very specific verticals. Um, and so uh, Handybook is probably our closest competitor. I know they're here uh, at, the, at the festival. Um, they're focused on you know, house cleaning and sort of handyman services. And so arguably they're pretty specific within their set, but their, you know, their handyman services cover a lot of different things. Um, but they are the closest competitor to us, whereas we're more focused on staying within very, very set verticals um, of things that recur you know, on a weekly basis. I don't know how many, how many times a week you need a handyman, but uh, I certainly um, you know, just call my landlord for that kind of a thing. Um, so we're focused on a little bit different demographics. They're probably single family. We're probably more like multifamily property geared. Um, and then there's, of course, you know, competition in, within each vertical. So Homejoy, probably everyone here in SF has, has heard of Homejoy. Uh, they're in a number of cities now. Um, they're competition because they're a house cleaning company, right? Whereas, you know, uh, we're more of a technology company um, that's specific to several different verticals. And so we're connecting the consumer with local service providers, whereas, you know, they're a house cleaning company like Molly Mates, just well-funded and you know, a little bit more techie. Hope that answers your question. Matt, I was wondering if you could talk about what your customer demographics look like and also if you've noticed a different user um, that's churning out of the system versus the ones that retain and used two or three times. <clears throat> um, Two really good questions. So um, I alluded to this a second ago, but, but our demographics are much more the multifamily property crowd. So the, the, the 20, 25 to 45 year olds um, who are living in apartments and condos uh, in dense urban areas. Um, it's actually split about 50-50 female. It's, it's actually like 53, 47 female to male customers, um, but most of whom are working professionals, again, 25 to 45 year olds. Uh, as far as um, attrition or churn um, and who we're seeing, um, you know, our biggest challenge right now and, and, and the thing that we're most excited about is, is really trying to get people to book cross-category. Um, you know, we have about 25% of our customers doing that today, um, but really where we are, are unique and where we want to be in the market is, is we want our customers using all of our services and not living within each vertical. And so we only have, you know, seven months of, of real cohort data. So it's tough for me to give you, uh, you know, a specific demo of who's, who, you know, who's dropping off, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to, to look at that carefully. She'd yell at me if I didn't do that. Uh, I infer from what you said that you use other providers to fulfill the services. Mm -hmm. So how do you control the quality to make sure it's an even experience across cities or even across different providers? It's a really good question. You know, as much as we're a technology company, we're still providing services, right? So trust is a big issue. Quality control, quality assurance on the technology and the service side is really important. Um, so we, we take it very seriously. Um, on, the, on the service side, um, Again, we only hire professionals. You have to have two plus years of, of actual professional experience. So for a house cleaner, you have to have done professional house cleaning before. Um, we call references to make sure that that work is actually justified. Um, and we do a test job for every single person. So we're actually funneling people into, in, into a, a pretty you know, strict and rigid onboarding process to make sure that you, all the boxes are checked for everyone. Um, and of course, we do you know, small customer touch points, things like you know, follow-up phone calls after every job to make sure that the quality was up to par. So we have a lot of checks built into our system that make sure that we don't have to go back and do a job over again and come out of pocket to pay for those sort of things. And so far, we've done a really, really good job of that. We also do some things like walk them through our guidelines and expectations um, so that the service is consistent. Um, if you come home from, from work and you had a house clean done, you, know, you come home to a door hanger, on the back of that door hanger, there's a checklist of everything that was done. So that's an example of our checks and balances. They actually go through that and check off one by one the things that they've done. They use it as a check for them. They know it's a check for us. And of course, it's a check for the customer to make sure that they know. Great, well, let's give a round of applause to Thank Matt you guys. Lucido from Porter.